So topical studies are always interesting. Um, it's so funny too because I it's like, well, what? How do you pick a topical topic? You, you, you got a Bible, <laughs> three thousand pages. There, there are lots of topics in there. Oh, so, is this the topical tonight? Yeah, then, uh, that's what I'm going to do for a while here. Is, is, is well, this is going to be a hybrid. Um, because I'm going to try and do this as topical. So, if any, you got any topics you guys want to talk about, you got questions about, just let me know. James, James gave me a list, so that's great. Uh, but I would encourage anybody to, um, and we'll just kind of fit things in. But what I'm going to do tonight is I am going to continue my first, my second Peter study that I probably won't be able to finish. But there's something in in this part that I want to talk about. So we're going to talk about the Bible. We're talking about the Word of God, because how can you do a Bible study if you don't trust the Word of God? Mm -hmm. And I want to look at just some things in the Word of God that we probably all know, but we'll have some references and we can go through and we can look at just kind of some interesting things. It might take a week, might take two weeks, but I think it's kind of cool. Um, so let's open with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the evening. Uh, we do thank you, as the song said, for the blessed assurance that we have that if we put our, our faith in in, in the, the death, burial, and resurrection of your Son for the forgiveness of our sins that you promised to, to put us into the church of body of Christ never again in jeopardy of eternity spent in the lake of fire, but that blessed assurance of being with you forever. What a, what a wonderful, wonderful hope that we have. Uh, again, and we thank you for your love and for your grace. In your Son's name, amen. 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 Okay, so uh, 2 Peter 1, verse uh, 12. Second Peter 1, verse 12. He says, Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them, and be established in the present truth. Yea, I think it meet, as long as I am in this tabernacle, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ hath showed me. Moreover, I will endeavor that ye may be, endeavor that ye may be able, after my decease, to have these things always in remembrance. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For who we received from God the Father honor and glory, when there came a voice to him from the excellent glory, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy not, came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, heresies even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Again, I'm not going to teach all this. I'm using this as a, as, a, as a tool to get where I want to get. But it's interesting here. Pete says, hey, I'm about to die, but i got some things I'm going to tell you. And I'm going to die just the way our Lord told me I was going to die. So, And, and, and the, the issue that he's talking about there, we can go look at it if, if you want, but it's what we call the transfiguration. Um, where, uh, well, let's go ahead and look at it. Let's go ahead and look at Matthew 16. Matthew 16. See Matthew sixteen and verse um, verse twenty seven. He says, "For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of His Father with His angels, and then He shall reward every man according to His works." Uh, by the way, that's not for us. Right. Don't don't try and make that the rapture, <laughs> because we're not going to be rewarded according according to our works. Sure. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. <laughs> now this becomes a problem because people say, well, he, the kingdom hasn't come yet and those people, are, those people that were standing there are dead. Right? But if you just invoke the David Reed principle and read the next verse, it answers it. After six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John his brother and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart. And was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. Behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, one for Elias. While they yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear 
ye him. So that's what Peter's talking about over there. He says, hey, there, there's some things that that, that, that that I saw and I've told you about. And it, it's interesting here in this passage, he says at the very end there where it says, hear ye him. Mm -hmm. The context there is, is you need to listen to, to, to my son, not Moses and Elijah. Okay, because we're we talk, we're, we're talking the new covenant time for those people. We're not in the new covenant in any of that, yeah. right? This has nothing to do with any with, with us. Um, the other thing too, if you look in verse two, it says he, has, he was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun. Mm -hmm. We're not going to do it, but if you go read Acts nine, yeah, similar. Peter or Paul saw greater than the sun, brighter than the sun. So it, it's just very interesting here. But then you have, this is what Peter's talking about. He says, look it, that, that wasn't some of the cunningly devised fables when we told you that we saw the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what he saw. So Peter, Peter saw what the Lord's going to look like when he comes back for Israel. Okay? He says, but, he says, but then if you go back to, to, to 2 Peter there, verse 19, you really want to hang your hat on. Pete says, I saw it with my own eyes. I told it to you. It wasn't a fable. It wasn't something that somebody else told us and, and, and we made up and we told you. I saw it with my own eyes. But verse 19, we have also a more sure word of prophecy. He says, I didn't lie to you and I saw it. But the word of prophecy, the word of God, has more validity than what I just told you and what I told you was the truth. See that? We have a more sure word. What's more? It's more sure than what I'm telling you. Well, a more sure, to, sure word of prophecy is when something's come to be. Well, huh? yes, but prophecy in the New Testament is used different than it is used in the Old Testament. Okay? Yeah. Prophecy here can also be that that's just what, 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 what when people would get a new revelation from God and say it, they would they would be called. That's what the New Testament would also use the word prophecy, not just prophetic, okay. right? Because because a lot of people, like Paul would say, a lot of people got the office of a prophet, right? Okay, right. Or or prophet. What was that? That was they would supernaturally get the information that Paul had already received, but Paul couldn't tweet it out on Twitter or whatever he would yeah, do. It right. Had get, it had to get to, to, to that. Right. Okay. This verse kind of reminds me of Romans fifteen eight. So that, you know, Jesus came to confirm the promise exactly. of the fathers. So if that's the confirmation of some of the unfulfilled, right. some of the fulfilled, fulfilled somewhere, yeah. Peter's going to be of a more sure word because, you know. Right, yeah. It, yeah. It, it, it's more than what I'm telling. <clears throat> you have to rely re rely on the word of God. Uh, and he says, you know, then he goes on, where unto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star rise in your hearts. That word of God is the light that's going to guide you. Okay? Because he's going to die. I, I'm, I don't have anything more to tell you. I don't have anything more to write to you. This is Second Peter. That's the last book with Peter's name on it. Yeah. He's going to die very shortly. And he knows that. Yeah. Okay? And then verse 20. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Now here, the word prophecy is referring to the Old Testament prophecy, prophesying of something in the, in the future. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Now that's what I want to hang my hat on here. Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't, think, I don't think I need to make this argument to the people here, but I am going to make this argument. And we want to understand it and, and rest and, and see what the Bible says about itself. It was written by 40 men, but it wasn't written by 40 men. Right. right. It was written by, by God. Okay? It was ins inspired by God. And we're, we're, we're going to see those things. Um, let me see what happened. I have a lot of this. So, so let's go back to... Um, let's go over to 2 Timothy 2. It's so funny that we were just reading this verse. Uh huh. Yeah, we did. They uh, out there. They've they've got this verse, but in Spanish. So I was trying to, oh, I was trying to, it. I was trying to figure out the Spanish version because I knew the English version. <laughs> Second Timothy three sixteen. He 
says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. There it is. This is what, Pete, Pete, what Pete's saying. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished into all good works. Now, we, we all know that grace people, we, we quote this verse all the time. How much scripture is given by inspiration of God? All of it. Even the part where Paul says, I don't say this by God, but by, I'm paraphrasing, Paul says, you know, this, this, this is not God saying it, this is me. Right, yeah. It's that still, still, it's still uh, yeah. God breathed. Right. He, he quote, Paul quotes a Cretan, a Cretan poet. Think about that. That is now divine word of God. That's yeah. kind of a weird thought. Okay. It's all profitable for doctrine. It's all profitable for reproof. And it's all profitable for correction, which mm -hmm. is the in instruction of righteousness. Why? Well, God allowed them to put it in the word. That's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. Exactly right. Yeah. That the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished in all good works. God's word is inspired, is God breathed, what that means there, because it's, it's, just, it's meant to accomplish a purpose. It's meant to get us mature. Right. Now notice that doesn't say a member of the church, the body of Christ, so that's what Paul has in mind. It just says the man of God. He's not anybody in any decade, in, in, in any decade, in, in any <laughs> decade, but also in any dispensation. Yeah, throughout all time. If they want to be mature, if they want to be truly furnished into all good works in their dispensation, it requires fidelity to the word of God, not their own opinion on it. Right. Okay. And, and, and coming to it where they can put their our, my opinion aside and let the word of God be true. Okay. Let's go to, um, I just want to show you a couple things about the word of God that I think are just fascinating to me. Uh, come with me to Psalm 69. I remember a friend of mine that uh, I always said, he says, I don't really like, the, not that I dislike, but not that I like the, the red version of Jesus speaking because it's, it puts I put emphasis more on that than in the whole of the thing. Yeah. Every, but which in the way, everyone is God speaking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's yeah, it's it's all from God. It's yeah. all from God. Yeah. We get what that means, though. I I get that I I get that sentiment, and I'm one of those. I really think the red letters are are really uh, devious, uh, and it really came to me because yes, everybody thinks the red letter, but. But, and I told you, if you go back and read John 3, the whole chapter, read it in a red, read it in, a, in an all black Bible, and then read it in a red letter Bible, the things you see when you think that are John's commentary on what Jesus said when you read it in all black letters, the red letters they say Jesus said. And it becomes very interesting when you read them that way. It will totally change. It, it, it does give some different emphasis on that passage when you understand a lot of it. Like, for instance, John three sixteen, Jesus didn't say. It doesn't. It looks like that's just John's commentary on what John, what Jesus had said. Yeah. It's very interesting. Um, yeah, and you know. So then you get well. Then do you have a problem with the chapters and the verses because they're just man's editing as well? Well, no, I. I like the chapters and the verses. Well, it's so. like when we were, we were in uh, Matthew 16, where, where Jesus is talking about, it, it, and then 17 is and. It's like a continuation, right. yeah. you know, but there's a chapter break there now. But right. that wasn't there. It wasn't there before. Right. But it right. throws people off. Just be, right. Because the, the chapter had 17 there. Yeah. You know. And sometimes I'll say, and again, I, I have no problem yeah. with chapters and verses in the Bible. And I know you don't either. Right. But yeah, you got to remember, that it, no, nobody wrote in chapter and verse. Yeah. They just wrote, they just and then wrote, we came right. back later, and it's it, it's good. I mean, can, can you imagine studying? We're going to look at a couple of things now, and I just can't imagine studying without that. Yeah. You know, um, it's hard enough when we you, everybody's got the Bibles that are laid out the same, but they're different, so you can't even call out page numbers. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but the, the, at the truck stop, I have, I give everybody the same Bible, and then I, and I use my Bible to teach, but we have another we have the the, the room Bible there that I go through too, so I can just throw oh, yeah, out yeah. page numbers real quick. Okay, anyhow. Oh, it's great. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's great. But I don't have references. I, I think I might want this yeah. a little more. A lot of people like that. The references, so now I yeah. lost the references, but now I can find those. Yeah. A lot of people, yeah. One door closes, another opens. That's right. That's right. Yeah. 
Okay, so we're just going to look at a couple of these things. Uh, we're going to keep. A, we're going to be back in, in Psalms a couple of times, but I just want to grab a couple of things. Psalm sixty nine twenty five. We're talking about prophecy, and, and 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 people didn't know what the prophecy meant when they wrote it. Let their habitation be desolate, and let none dwell in their tents. You guys get any idea what that prophecy is? Sixty nine twenty five. It says, let their habitation be desolate and let none dwell in their tents. Well, if you just take it like just that verse, it maybe is talking about their hearts. They don't want sin to be habitating in their heart. Okay. That's what I would do. Okay. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I know. I don't, yeah. Yeah. Look at Psalm 100. No one else is going to say anything? Look, look at the, I got to read the context. Yeah, I was going to read the context. Go ahead and read. Yeah. You, I, yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> because if you don't know, you don't know. All I right. guarantee you're not going to figure it okay. out. Okay. <laughs> Look at Psalm 109. This one you might. So we'll get the context on this one. So I, I, what I want is verse 8, but we'll start in verse 6. Set thou a wicked man over him, and let Satan stand at his right hand. When shall when he shall be judged, and let him be condemned, and let his prayer become sin. You can see it's a courtroom, right? Satan's standing up on the right hand, and all the judgment up there. Verse 8, let his days be few, and let another take his office. Let his children be fatherless, and his wife a widow. Let his children be continually vagabonds, and beg. Let them seek their bread also out of their desolate places. You guys know what that prophecy is about? No. Okay. I don't know. Uh, um, Come with me. Is it about Ready. Judas? Exactly. Come over to Acts 1. Acts 1. You get the gold star. This is the only part that's popped out of me. John, right now, I'm sorry. Acts. Oh. Acts 1 and verse 20. <coughs> Verse 16, actually, first. So everybody's... Pizza says, verse 16, Acts 1, 16. Brethren, men and brethren, this scripture, scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost, by the mouth of David, spake before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. And then jump over to verse 20. For it is written... Notice what David said, now here it says written. Yeah. Okay. Now this old David also David said it, but he also wrote it. Okay? Anyhow, but for it is written in the book of Psalms, let his habitation be desolate, let no man dwell therein, and his bishopric let another take. All those things that didn't make any sense are fulfilled, Pete says are fulfilled in Judas, but not only not necessarily in Judas, but in the in replacement, and almost you could say in Matthias, who is yeah. the replacement. I just remember why I remembered it. It's because we were going through this once and you gave me a hard time because I spelt, I, I pronounced the shop or, you know. That's why, and that is it. That's, that's why that, because of that. Yeah, you gave me a hard time over that for a while. Yeah. That's, so whatever it takes to, whatever it makes you, you know, remember something. You know, sometimes it's weird things. So let's say, let's look at What was the first one? Psalm 68, what? 16, Psalm 69, 25. And 1098. So now I'm going to look at one. 109 verse 8. 109 verse 8. So keep a hand in Acts because we're going to look at something there too, but we're also going to look at, turn to Isaiah 6. This is another one. Now this one, this one if you're not careful, people use this to trip you up. I might use it to trip you up here in a minute. Okay, where are we going? Isaiah 6, verse 9. <clears throat> Isaiah 6, verse 9. 
He says, And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not. See ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, make their ears heavy, shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert and be healed. Then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, Until the cities be wasted without inhabitant, and the houses without man, and the land be utterly desolate. The Lord have removed men far away, and there be a forsaken in the midst of the land. But yet in it shall be a tenth, and it shall return, and shall be eaten as a teal tree, as an oak, whose substance is in them when they cast their leaves, so the holy, she, she, holy seed shall be the substance thereof. So what you see is, look, it, you guys, you're going to be blind. You're not going to hear. You're, you're going to hear, but you're not going to understand. You're going to see, but you're gonna, not going to perceive it. I'm gonna, you're going to be cast off, but eventually 10% are coming back. There's that 10% number. This that, that, is the non-believing. Uh, that's the Jews. remnant. Yeah, exactly. And 10% is the Jews. That would be the remnant. remnant. That would be the remnant. Yeah. That would be, be the remnant. So, yeah. My point in all of this is, that, is actually verse 9. Okay? So now come back to Isaiah 28. Again. Isaiah, or, uh, Acts 28, verse 25. Okay. See, if you ever want to know what a Bible study for Dave looks like, this is what it looks like. I usually have a football game, and I'm just chasing all these things down. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, just, I just go, wow, this, just, this is the kind of thing that just fascinates me. These are the kinds of things that make me realize, I mean, I, I already know it. It wasn't 40 dudes that wrote this book, no. and it just happened to work out. Yeah. No way. It's not possible. It's just too, no uh, I mean, God's wisdom is manifested in his word. So this one will trip you up, because this one's people, this one is one that people will use against you. So Acts 28, verse 25. So uh, some, some the, the Jews come, and, 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 and Paul's talking to them, and, and verse 24, some believe the things are spoken, some believe not. And when they agreed not among themselves, they departed. After that, Paul had spoken one word, well spake the Holy Ghost by Isaiah the prophet unto our fathers, saying, Go unto this people, and saying, Hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and not perceive. For the heart of this people is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their hearts, and their ears, and understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Be it known, therefore, unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles and that they will hear it. All right, so here it is. All that stuff, Dave, you've been saying for 15 years is just wrong. The dispensation of grace is clearly back there in Isaiah 6 that we just looked at. And the salvation wasn't sent to the Gentiles until right now. Because that's clearly what it says. But that's not what it says. First of all, verse 28 says, Salvation of God is sent to the Gentiles, not will be sent. It's also, by this time, it's already been sent. What Paul's doing, Paul has had a conversation with them, and he has used their own scriptures against them to say, Isaiah was right. This is so true about you. But when did God turn his back, if you would, on the nation of Israel? Was it at, at the end of Acts 28? No, Acts 28. No, it was when Nebuchadnezzar, when, when, yeah, when Nebuchadnezzar took them into captivity, Right? And then John the Baptist shows up. 400 years later, John the Baptist shows up, speaks comfortably to the nation. That's when God's speaking comfort to the nation. Mm -hmm. And then you just brought it up, Romans 15, 8. Jesus Christ came to confirm, not fulfill, to right. confirm the promises Honestly, made to the fathers, right. but they rejected it. Right? Okay? So this is what, this is, this is what Paul, Paul's not saying, that, okay, Isaiah is fulfilled now, therefore, from this point forward, salvation is to the Gentiles. No. He's saying Isaiah was right. That's why so like, because it, it started back there. Now this was the grace didn't yeah, start back there. And, right. yeah. But God brought the the, 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 the the final countdown, the final jeopardy, the final verdict down on Israel back with Nebuchadnezzar. Now he'll deal with a, a, the tenth of them again in the future. Right, the small so, remnant. Kind of like when I, I, I got a, for one of the Bible topics here that's um, Paul's using Israel's scripture to prove his point. Right. It, it, it's not necessarily the, the mystery, but the prop, the prophecies bear witness to what Paul is saying is true. So it's another one of those. I had never thought about this before yeah. until I, but I just talked about it. Yeah. Who did Paul quote the Grecian prophet to? 
the Greek Grecian poem to to Titus. No, to a Grecian, uh, right? In Titus, but 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 to a Grecian, to the to the people of Crete. Epimenides or something. Right, yeah, but, yeah. but but to the people of Crete, they yeah. knew. Yeah, right. Why wouldn't he? Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Why, why wouldn't he quote to make his point? Quote something that they knew. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, wouldn't right. he quote to a Jew? Yes. Something yeah. that they knew. knew which right. are the old, right? Yeah. When when we get in yeah. arguments in our country, what do we do? We quote we quote the founding fathers. We don't quote quote the king of England right because most of us don't understand that stuff well that's right? what was so good about Paul because yeah. he knew the Old Testament so well because he was a Jew as well right he was but, wrong he was Jew and Gentile a, it's like a common sense thing that that we do outside of the Bible but then when it comes to the Bible to apply that same concept we get kind of messed up you know and, and it's kind of it's kind of weird that way when you think yeah. about the veracity of the scriptures yeah. even Christ himself uh, when he was being tempted, what was his authority there? It, it, yeah, is it is written. Yeah, it, it is written. You know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. That's how we need to be. And what was the failure in the garden? The same thing. It, yeah. It was just yeah. the opposite of the corollary, right? It was. He should have said, "God said, yeah, we can freely eat from any tree." Okay. For the, so let's yeah. look at. We're going to look at a lot of verses. Like, well, it's me. So let's go back to Psalm 12 and let's just see what the Scripture says about right. Scripture. 12? Yeah, Psalm 12. Verse 6. See, I don't know how in the, into the weeds to get. We can get really into the weeds. <laughs> if somebody that was not familiar with Life of Vision came tonight, they might be a little confused. We would, so what would we happen could. if I could get somebody to come and we adjust on the fly. We adjust on the fly. You should have seen it at the, yeah, at, at, the, the, at, the tr- the at the truck stop. We're uh, we're going. I'm well into a meeting. It's, it, it, I know it's going to be a very dry night. I mean, I it, it, it's a it's a lesson. I'm really not even excited to give, but I've got to I've got to get through this <laughs> lesson so that we can move on. But it's okay with the, the crowd I'm with. And uh, oh, crazy thing, there's a family in a truck. They're traveling as a family, a, a, a husband and a wife and, and two two teenage girls. And they come, I said, okay, no, there's no way. So it took me about three minutes or four minutes to wrap that up and get to where I wanted to go. And April got the car, she goes, oh, I thought you were going to keep going. I said, no, no, no. Yeah. But that's what you got to do. And then, then it just became, I just I turned that into right division. And you'll see it happen because it'll happen. As people bring people, you, you'll see it happen. Um, the, the lesson changes. The lesson will change because... There's a time and a place for everything. For sure. And even this lesson is, I assume everybody here knows this issue, but it's good to go back and visit some of the things <laughs> and understand why do we believe what we believe? A lot of times we believe it just because we've been told it. And then we, we see one or two scriptures that, and but somebody can come along. And I, I guarantee you, if you, if you t- defend right division long enough, the thing we just talked about, somebody will bring up to you. That's a pretty easy one, mm-hmm. you know. But, just about any book you read about combating dispensationalism, yeah. will, will, then there'll be other things like that. They'll bring up Acts twenty eight twenty five to, to say the mysteries back. To, yes, to, see, to, it's clearly right there. Back, Paul yeah. quotes it. Your yeah. apostle, yeah. your apostle, the guy right. you're so happy with, he's quoting it. Yeah. Well, that's why you point out that word, that one word is, not that it will yeah. be or that it, it is. It, it already has taken place. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, so look at Psalm 12, verse 6. I had hope most lessons, by the way, Liz, are not. We're going to be, or we'll be, we'll be a little different. We'll, we'll learn stuff, and, and we'll talk about stuff, and the, you know, these are great because if there's a conference, something will come up, and maybe we'll just take off and go a different direction, and we never get back. So, yeah. the words of the Lord are pure words, yes. as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation. Forever. Now, that's what the Bible says about itself. We've, now we've seen the issue with 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 inspired, right? The, the words are inspired. We looked at a couple of examples of it. Okay, but Peter said they were inspired. Paul said they were inspired, and we saw some where there was some fulfillment later. And the question always is, well, who cares? 
if their originals are inspired if God hasn't promised to preserve them, right? right? I mean, really, who cares? If they're going to be lost anyhow. Right, if they're going to be, it, 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 because we're not going back to them. I don't have them, right? We got, one, two, what, how many, six, six copies right here. Not even in the original languages, okay? But God has promised to preserve them forever. Um, look over at Isaiah 40. Now, this is interesting here because if you're not familiar with it, Isaiah 40 is the prophecy about John the Baptist. Okay? Verse, you see Isaiah 40, verse 1. Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, saith your God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem. Cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is parted. For she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Well, that's, that's fulfilled in John the Baptist. Okay? Which, by the way, it's fulfilled in Matthew 3, which is the 40th book and the third chapter. And John the Baptist is in Isaiah 40, chapter 3. So if you like biblical numer numer numerics or whatever they call it, there's that. He goes, oh, Dave, you're getting weird stuff. No, it's good. But anyhow, my point here is that this is where the, this verse lies. So God is now going to speak comfortably to his nation again, okay? And in, in that, down in verse 8, he says, The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Okay? The word of God is not less um, relevant today than it was 2,000 years ago or 4,000 years ago or 6,000 years ago other than from a dispensational setting. Okay, and we need to, re to rely on that. And again, this is one of the attacks that people will make. Well, look at how could he have preserved it for all that time? We got all these different things, but he's promised to. He's promised to. So, where am I on time? Oh my goodness, I want to look at one more thing that maybe you guys have never seen before, or thought about before. And we're going to do this in order. Come with me to Exodus twenty-four four. Did you know that you can watch the Bible get written? You can watch the Bible get written. Okay, that's cool. Uh, Exodus 24, verse 3. Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the judgments and all the people answered with one voice and said, all the words which the Lord has said, we will do. What should they have said? No, we can't. Do they it. should have said, we'll take the grace message, yeah. please. <laughs> right? They'd experienced the grace message, if you will. He gave them five opportunities and all five they failed. They should have said, oh, we are not up to the task. But anyhow, verse four. And Moses, what did he do? He wrote all the words of the Lord and rose up early in the morning and built them out. What, what are you watching? You're watching them. You're watching them right there, right? Those first five books. It's exactly what he's doing. You can see Moses writing them down. That's why so many uh, of uh, uh, other authors and, and Jesus Christ himself said, Moses told you, Moses wrote. Yeah. Because there, there is an attack. One of the attacks, too, is, and it's very convoluted, that four different people wrote the first five books of the Bible, none of them being Moses. And it's, it's, uh, it just, right. it's not true. Moses wrote, wrote these things. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Look over at Numbers 33.
Numbers 33, verse 1. These are the journeys of the children of Israel, which went forth out of the land of Egypt with their armies under the hand of Moses and Aaron. And Moses wrote their goings out according to their journeys by the commandment of the Lord. And these are their journeys according to their goings out. He's writing, you see him right there writing the book of Numbers. Yeah. Okay. Look over at Deuteronomy 31. Verse 22. What is it, Deuteronomy? 31, verse 22. <clears throat> There's, this is this, the, the, you know, he, he wrote that song, first, verse 22. Deuteronomy, what, 22? 31, 31, 22. Moses, therefore, wrote this song the same day and wrote it the children of Israel again what, what am I why am I talking about this you can actually see the word of God being written it gives testimony of how it was written look over uh, 1 Samuel 10 25. Then Samuel told the people the manner of the kingdom and what? He wrote, wrote it in a book and laid it up before the Lord. You can see it just it's, you can see it getting written. This one I love. Now this one, this one you need to, to remember. The, the, this one will save you. This is one you can use as a gotcha if you ever want to use it as a gotcha. Look at Jeremiah 36. It's funny, Liz, I think about your, your, your question right now. We would have jumped into right division when you brought up Romans 15.8. Or when I brought up that other one, I just said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Jeremiah 36 and verse 1. And it came to pass in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, that this word came unto Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Take thee a roll of a book, and write there in all the words that I have spoken unto thee against Israel and against Judah and against all the nations from the day I spake unto thee, from the days of Josiah, even unto this day. He's writing the book of Jeremiah. God says, I, Jeremiah, I gave you this information. I want you to write that information down. That information is what we call the book of Jeremiah. So jump over to verse 20. These are the bad guys. I'm just kind of jumping into the context. You can go back and read the whole chapter and get find out everything. These are the bad guys. And they, the bad guys, went into the king, into the court, but they laid up the roll in the chamber of Elishama, the scribe, and told all the words in the ears of the king. So the king sent Jehudi to fetch the roll, and he took it out of Elishama, the scribe's chamber, and Jehudi read it in the ears of the king and in the ears of all the princes which stood beside the king. Now the king sat in the winter house in the ninth month, and there was a fire on the hearth burning before him. And it came to pass that when Jehudi had read three or four leaves, he cut it with a penknife and cast it into the fire that was on the hearth until all the roll was consumed in the fire, and that was on the hearth. He just took the brand new book of Jeremiah, <laughs> cut it up, and threw it in the fire. Okay, jump over to verse 27. Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah after that the king had burned the roll, and the words which Baruch wrote at the mouth of Jeremiah, saying, Take thee again another roll. Write it in all the former words that thou were in the first roll, which Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, hath burned. Okay? So what's he doing? He wrote it. He's making another one. Yeah. Right? Okay? Now look at verse 32. Then took Jeremiah another roll, gave it to Baruch the scribe, the son of Neriah, who wrote therein from the mouth of Jeremiah all the words of the book which Jehoiakim, king of Judah, had burned in the fire. Right? He doesn't stop there, does he? 
and there were added besides unto them many like words. Do you understand? I mean, th just think about what just happened there. The book of Jeremiah is written. It gets burned. God says, write another book of Jeremiah. Oh, but we're going to have the extended version. <laughs> the book of Jeremiah, that is scripture, is not the, the same as the very book. first book of Jeremiah right. that got burned. Mm -hmm. But what does God think it is? God mm -hmm. thinks the second one is yeah. Scripture. Yeah. So how important does God think the original is? And he knew it was going to get burned. The point is not to win some arguments. But that, if you can remember Jeremiah 36, that will save you when people come along and say the things that they do about the Word of God. That, that well, we, we don't have the originals. Nobody had the original uh, yeah. Jeremiah. And the original Jeremiah is different than the Jeremiah that made it to Scripture. And God thinks the one that made it to Scripture yeah. is inspired. inspired. Right. Yeah. Wow, how many attacks by liberal little l Christian scholars does that just destroy? Yeah. Which is the extra part in Jeremiah? I don't know which chapters or whatever. I don't. I would assume the the, the end, but I, I yeah. he, he doesn't yeah, tell he us. Knows. He doesn't tell us. Life. You know. You, you, yeah. you, well, I, I guess I guess we do. I, we know thirty two was. Yeah. All of this, all, this whole chapter yeah. was. Uh, yeah. So I. Right. You're right. Yeah, yeah. I guess we do from thirty six on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that just fast? Uh, yeah. To me, that, that to me that's the kind of thing that just is it, it's, it's fascinating oh, to, yeah. to me. Um, Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, look over at John 14 and verse 26. Fourteen thirty. 26. 26, yeah. So one of the, another attack on the Word of God is that all of the... Um, all of the gospel accounts were, work, were written late. We'll deal with that probably next week. But all the were written late because you can tell because nobody, or, or they had to be because as they look back at the events and some things and, and things are a little bit different. But look what this look what Jesus says here. John chapter fourteen verse twenty six. But the Comforter which is the Holy Ghost, <clears throat> whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. That's, for the, that's how the gospel writers could recall everything. First of all, it's inspired. Right. But the Holy Ghost brought it to remembrance. Yeah. They weren't just recalling from memory. John just didn't sit down one day with a copy of Mark and say, well, that's a little different. Because everybody says Mark is, is, was written first. And, and, and write these things down. No. The Holy Ghost inspired it. Mm -hmm. And to remember these events, the Holy Spirit is how they remembered those events. Yeah. Their memory was no better than yours or mine. And mine's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> the, Holy, the Holy Spirit wrote, wrote the law on their hearts. Right. You know? so. Yeah. They have that, and so, like in First John, you know, he says he'll just know. There's no need that I teach you. You should know, kind of well, like we say in here. Mike, Mike, okay, yeah. we, we're going to do it. <laughs> My cross reference that I wrote in is First John two twenty seven, and I wrote it down. I said, no, we don't need to do that tonight. We'll cross it off, but we're going to go do it now. First John two twenty seven. That's why I went to, to to have a to to study and to teach and he even have an understanding of Hebrews for Revelation. You have to have some level of a working understanding of the Old Testament and and the Gospel accounts. It really does make it so much better, so much easier. So look at first first John two and verse twenty seven. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you. Well, that's what the Lord Jesus Christ was just talking about. 
the Holy Spirit's going to come. Okay. It abides in you, and ye need not that any man teach you. Why? Because the Holy Spirit's going to bring that remembrance back to them. But as the same as the same anointing teacheth you of all things and is truth and is no lie, even even as has taught you, ye shall abide in them. And, and then he goes on. So you can see the the. the there's a supernatural re remembrance of things there. Okay? So I want to talk, do a, a couple other issues. So if you would, come with me back to Deuteronomy again in Deuteronomy 17. Deuteronomy 17 and verse 18. Deuteronomy 18. Now this is amazing. This is a, uh, a prophecy where Moses says, by the way, when you guys go into land, you're going to want a king over you. Now you shouldn't want a king over you, but you're going to want it. And this is what's going to happen when you do that. So, and, and then, of course, we just read in Samuel that that's exactly what was happening here. But this is what the king must do. Deuteronomy 18, 18. And it shall be when he, that's the king, sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom, that he shall write him a copy of of this law in a book out of that which is before the priests, the Levites, and it shall be with him and shall read therein all the days of his life that he may learn to fear the Lord his God to keep all the words of this law and these statutes to do them that his heart be not lifted up above his brethren that he turn not aside from the commandment to the right or to the left to the end that he may prolong his days in his kingdom he and his children in the midst of Israel. What does God think about this copy that the king is going to make? It's going, to, it's going to be sufficient for the king to learn to fear the God, to, to fear God. It's going to be sufficient to allow the king to keep all the words of the law and the statutes and to do them and to keep him humble. God thinks that the copy is going to be good enough, is going to be the word of God. It's going to have the same, okay? Look over at Joshua 8. Everything okay? Yeah. Is that Teresa? Nope. I'm doing references for second. Joshua 8. Verse 32. And Joshua did this. And he wrote there upon the stones a copy of the law of Moses, which, which he wrote in the presence of the children of Israel. How did God preserve his word? Through a multiplicity of copies. Right? So if error came in, there was something that it could be compared against. Right. Correct? The King James Bible, and I can't remember which way it is. I could, there, there's a he version and a she version. And one was wrong and one was right. And it's based on something in Ruth where the passage says he went out and then and where it says she went out. And I forget which is the right way. I can look it up. But but then that, that was produced for a short time the wrong one but how did it get caught there was a standard and there was a multiplicity of copies that people say oh that's wrong yeah. and so mm -hmm. okay that's how god has promised to preserve his god through a through his word through a multiplicity of copies yeah. the 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 original that's written down is the inspired yeah. the copies are not inspired right this book that i have right here the, the actual pages and the ink are not inspired, but there are copies that God has preserved through a multiplicity of copies, and there is a standard. We often yeah. talk in, in America that, and, and people make a big deal. Well, the King James doesn't have a copyright, and that, that's true if you have an American one. But the problem is, and this is what happened: the reason there is no copyright in America is because the the colonists, when they came over, they were going to stick it to King George and said, "We're not going to honor your copyright. We're going to produce our own." And you know what? There were some errors in that. But if you, if, and, and the American ones are fine. I'm not saying they don't have one. But I have an Oxford, or I have a Cambridge, and there's an Oxford, and they are, they do have a copyright, and that's important because there's a standard. Right. You can go look at this, and they can compare it to the one that was made, 
And okay, there's no yes, errors. there's no errors in there. Okay, now yeah. the group that meets here, they don't use the English Bible, they use the Spanish Bible. There are people that will tell you the King James Bible is the only perfect word of God today. That is not true. It is for the English language speaking mm -hmm. people, but there are lots of different versions yeah. as long as they're big, and we, we can get into that. But anyhow, yeah. it, it, it's not just this. Yeah. It is this for America, for English speaking people, okay? Yeah, that's the manuscripts. It, See, it, that's is, what it the, comes down to. The, these are, you know, the text is just set, this is yeah. take, taking off the majority text. But in, in the idea there is that the, 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 the more, more accurate manuscripts are the ones that were copied and the ones that weren't as good as the ones they didn't copy. Other people look at it differently, though, but yeah. it seems to me it makes sense that the better text, the more accurate ones should be the ones that Sure, mm -hmm. look at it. You know. Here, let me, let me show you something. I'll, show you, I'll, make, I'll make James's point here in my own Bible. <coughs> yeah. Okay? Look at these pages in the book, in, in my pages in the book in the book of Romans. They're all yellowed. They're they're all taped together. There's they're, right. They're all taped together, right? Why? Because I use them all the time. First Kings. That looks awesome, right? Right. Now, which one do you think would get torn up and copied again? This one. Yeah. In in back oh, yeah, in that yes. day. Yeah, yeah. And and so yeah, it, 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 it's a it's a. It's, it's not a, it's, it's not the, there the other side's best argument. Okay, a couple more and then we'll be done for tonight. Luke 4, what'd you say about me? You don't want to know. Okay. <laughs> That's probably true. Yeah, it was cute. Though. You're okay. I said, I think he should wash his hands more. <laughs> oh. Yeah, no, I, no ice cream for you tonight. <laughs> Luke 4, verse 16. Just do two more, and then we'll finish this up. We'll, we'll, we'll bring a practical application to it next week. And, and then, I'll, James, I'll, I will go through your list. And if anybody else has anything, let, let me know. And I, I have some things in the back of my head I want to you talk about. you got to hit on a, lot, a couple of them. Yeah, you know, real quick. <laughs> I, we'll, you know, we, yeah. we'll, we'll give it more. Look at verse 16. This is the Lord Jesus Christ. And he, the Lord Jesus Christ, came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him a book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Do you think he had the original copy of Isaiah? <laughs> no. No, he stood up he and he read a copy. Right. In did the Lord Jesus Christ, who is, by the way, the Word, did he think that was authoritative enough to make his point? Mm -hmm. He did. And it's, what's interesting is uh, he didn't quote, uh, this is a this will show you that Jesus Christ rightly divided too, because if you go back and read Isaiah 61 2, Jesus Christ left off half the verse. Isaiah 61 2. Right, yeah. right in the middle of it. Yeah, stopped right in the middle. Because it was the acceptable year of the Lord. It was yeah. not the day of his vengeance, or I forget right. how it how it ends. Um, one and one, just now let me one more. Look over at Acts 8. As I, I understand everybody in this room, but I when I when I start new Bible studies, I like to start just kind of from the basics. Look at the reason we study the Bible is because it's not like any other book. Yep. It, yeah, it is right. special, and the things that said you don't you don't need to go. I have no problem with commentaries, right? I've got a library at home with probably three times that, but you don't need to go to the commentaries. The internal evidence yeah. will do it. Yeah. yeah. This will this will edify and teach you all right. you need to know. And, and commentaries yeah. are again, I have no problem with commentaries and, and, and whatnot, but um, so look at Acts eight and verse twenty seven. This is the story of, of the Ethiopian eunuch. And he, that's Philip, arose and went. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure, had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to his chariot, this chariot. Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? 
and he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. Now, I just want to take a moment here before we continue on. This is a Gentile. Right. That in accord with the Abrahamic covenant, went to Jerusalem to get some understanding. He's on his way home. Mm -hmm. He didn't get the understanding. What a terrible statement about the spiritual condition of the nation of Israel. He went to do what he should have done. He, he, everything the Ethiopian unit does here is right. Hey, I want to know about, know about Israel's God. Well, I'll go to Jerusalem at the time of the feast. And he leaves yeah. empty handed. Okay. Verse 32 The pl place of the scripture we read was this He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, like a lamb dumb before a shearer, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. Who shall declare his generation, for his life is taken from the earth? The eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or some other man? That's the same question being asked by the Jews today. They would deny that, I, that all these prophecies about the Lord Jesus Christ are about the Lord about Jesus Christ. They would say they're about the, what we call the, the little remnant. Yeah. Okay. Then Philip opened his mouth and began the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. They went on their way. They came into certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down <laughs> both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. Did I miss something? Yes. Mm -hmm. The new the new versions dropped that. Uh, yeah. They really? got it. Yeah. Wow. And by the way, thirty seven is the point of the passage. Yeah. Yes. Right. If thou Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou thou may, mayest. And he answered and he said, I believe, I believe that, that Jesus, Jesus died for my sins, was buried and rose again the third day for my sins. No, I doesn't. believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. The reason they take that, take the verse out, is because it's not the gospel. It, it, there's a reason for it. Anyhow, okay. Yeah. So, and then Philip does get, and, he, and then he does get baptized because that is the right thing. Okay. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You know somebody yeah. else that said that same Peter. thing. Peter, Peter, thou art the Christ, the Son of the Living God. And Martha. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Now. This Ethiopian eunuch, he's left Ethiopia, he, he's, he must have some authority, he goes to Jerusalem, he's on his way back from Jerusalem, he's got the book of Isaiah with, with him, do you think it's the original? Did Philip stop and say, whoa, whoa, we can't use that? He taught him out of it. He said, give it to me, let me show you another. Right. And Philip he taught him. him out of it. Philip, now by the way, Philip, operating by the power of the Holy Spirit, thought it was authoritative enough to teach. Okay. The Word of God proclaims itself to be inspired. The Word of God proclaims that God has preserved it. The Word of God proclaims that he did it through copies and that copies are authoritative. Next week we'll look at a little bit about the translation issue and then we'll just get some, why does this matter, Dave? We know this. But we'll show you some some practical, or one practical application which we kind of stumbled on tonight. You do have to be convinced that what we're studying is the true Word of God. You, you have to, because if you just think it's, if you think there's errors in it, then what errors are and what errors aren't, you do need to be fully persuaded just to believe it. James says a double-minded a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. I know we're not supposed to quote James when we're grace believers. But that's so true. If you can't be 100% convinced that what you have is the authoritative, perfect word of God, why do you believe any of it? Yeah. And it can't work, work effectively in you. Right, like, right. How, how those believe? that don't believe. <laughs> right, if you don't because believe it, that sounds going to work. You know, I, I, have a, I have a family member that doesn't believe anything, but he did pull me aside and he said, you know, I do believe Jesus died for my sins. I go, you know, I don't even know why you believe that. I mean, he's going to look at me and go, I go, I go, why would you believe that? You don't believe anything else. Huh. Why do you believe that? He doesn't believe the Bible then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, you know, his eyes are like he's thinking yeah. he's going to make some points. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> but, but I mean, yeah, I mean, and I, I look at, you know, I think I've told you I went to that men's Bible study one time, and it was a thing about the, the talking donkey and, and all this. And and the guy that was teaching, he had his NIV in his hand. He held it. He said, you know, guys, the NIV is wrong here. The King James is right because it's got this stuff. And so we came back. We we same got back. Same came back next week, and I was oh yeah, Dave, you're right with that King James stuff, and I said yeah, okay, you guys all agree that the, that your Bible is wrong. There, are you all still using it? Every one of them still using it. Yeah, what is it? It's just crazy. Bible knows wrong. Yeah. It's just, better. But their testimony was it's the perfect word of God, and 
And, and, and so then, then you can see it work out. Now, do, do King James people and grace believers, do they have ever doubts? Do they ever? Sure they do. Sure they do. I'm not. But, but if you can't start with something, if you can't believe what the book says about itself, you, 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 you can't go anywhere. Because everything's predicated on the fact of whether or not the book is true or not. Right. right? Yeah. Is it inspired by God? Or was it just written by 40 dudes? Was it preserved? Can we trust how it's been preserved? Can we trust copies? You know, people trust, uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a, sometimes I think it's a silly thing, but there's a lot of validity to it. Nobody doubts the copies of Shakespeare's plays. You know, why? Because they have copies, right? They can compare them, they compare the copies. Or, or Josephus, you know, Antiquities of the yeah. Jews. You know, a lot of people have used that, you know, to disprove the Bible or Bible right. events. But the, the, like, We're like that one's that. not doctored at all, or right? You know, that one's right. That's that's perfectly oh, you know, yeah. good example. And Josephus is, yeah. you, know, you know, so he he was contemporary with Jesus Christ yeah. and Paul, and, yeah. and I don't know if you ever read, read any of the stuff of Josephus. The 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 yeah. thing the thing the thing to take away that I read, took away from reading Josephus was Josephus really liked Josephus. <laughs> yeah. Josephus really liked Josephus. It, it, it was it was like a real Don Quixote to me. So Cephas had a lot of great things to say about himself. So, it's like, like, how do we know that wasn't just translated? Exactly. Yeah, that's such a good point. Were, exactly. Oh no, you know, it's just weird. Yeah. Okay, so so next week I said we'll look at the translation issue. Can you trust the translation? And then I want to look at well, why do we talk about this, Dave? Everybody knows it. And we'll talk about, like I said, a couple of practical applications that we can see and go, wow, okay, I get it. And that's where I need to be. So, dear Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you for your love and for your grace. We do thank you that you've given us a perfect your perfect word that is that the originals were inspired and you've promised throughout the ages to preserve it that we can go to the shelf and, and, and grab in, in for the english language and in the king james bible the perfect inerrant preserved word of god that we can put a hundred percent faith in every word every every, every word in that um, we do thank you for that that we don't have to rely on a feeling or a guess or a hope we can go and we can read your word and understand exactly what you have to say to us today. Uh, we do thank you so much for that. We do thank you for the finished work of the cross. Uh, and again, as we started, we do thank you for the blessed assurance, the hope that we have being in Christ. In your son's precious name, amen. 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 Thank you, Dave. Yeah. That was, that was awesome. Yeah, okay. That was quite the sequence of